last day and a half. We drove uh, three, six, seven hours. <laughs> I drove seven hours today. Drove three and a half one way to grab the other goat, goat number two. He's got these little horns on that big. And uh, and uh, it wasn't too happy to leave its family. Got it back. And then the little goat here, which has it, it's about, the goat that we have here is probably 10 or 12 pounds lighter than the other one. And the other one has little horns. And this thing dominated the crap out of it, attacked it a million times. It was just kind of brutal to watch. It's like, you dirty little shit, are you kidding me? So this poor thing got ripped out of its home, road tripped here, and now it's a little, uh, it's not the happiest little goat in the world, but it will be soon. But it's kind of, kind of bizarre to watch that interaction go down with the, uh, the little goat, the little female goat we already have, and how it has laid like, claim to all of us in this whole territory. And it was going to uh, be, try to beat the crap out of this bigger female goat. And they were born at the same time, the same age. But anyways, you see how it pans out. But the only un unfortunate part is I bought another video camera the other day before I head up north because I had the lens scratched and the other one I've been using and uh, dropped, I don't know, 1800 bucks or something. Day before yesterday. And it was in the house in the tripod. And the goat, little goat, was in the house. Just inside the porch, ran by the tripod, knocked my camera over and smashed it and I never even got to use it once. <laughs> so anyway. Enough of that day today. So now I'm in the shop and the old ballast lights in the ceiling seem to have possibly shorted out altogether. Popped a circuit, could smell some kind of smoke in here. I'll tell you what, if this place burned down, I would not be happy. So, plugged in a couple other lights here. I'm gonna hang out here a little bit, make some shares and make sure there's no other additional smoke. So that really, really, really suck. And uh, we're getting a lot of uh, very experienced, knowledge-filled people are, are emailing in. And I am getting very close to giving everybody what I believe is true for me so far. I think I've got a pretty, fairly decent picture of exactly what's going on and why, I believe. So I'm gonna wait and see it's got a couple more contacts to get back to me. We'll see what comes. And then uh, I think I'm gonna lay down a video shortly to share with everybody how my puzzle's looking for me, all right? And I will never dictate to any of you that I am right and you are wrong. It's not gonna happen. What I will share with all of you soon is, is what I feel may be going on and how strongly I feel I may possibly be correct for me and my puzzle. It may or may not assist your puzzle, where your puzzle may be a lot more fuller than mine and a lot more clear and might make a lot more sense. But I have a feeling there's probably a good handful of people out there right now whose puzzles are closing in. And you, there might be more people out there who are as well ready to uh, possibly give us a little bit of an update on where they're at now with their puzzle. Okay? So let's see what we got. Get some more knowledge shared. While I hang out here in the smoke-filled shop, well, not smoke-filled, but you can just smell something's up, right? Was. And yes, the breakers popped. But anyways, puzzle pieces are published, Steve. Oh, here we go, coincidental uh, title. Hey, brother, I, mo I wrote you months back from another disposable, so searching might slash might not find it. Y'all better look if you search by my phrases and writing manner. I'll try to pick up where I left off. It's a lot to write out and I tend to ramble, but we'll say, but what I say will spur thought, brother. Anyway, I've been with you from the hunting only days and I've seen every video you've put on this. Feel, feel you're providing a huge service to the many who've been sentenced to the club of no return and for this I sincerely thank you. You've not only given a voice to those who've witnessed, but also to those who found themselves by way of life on the other side of this, bound by an oath taken with no warning of what knowledge was to come and their role in withholding it, meaning even if that duty was to remain confidential, my backstory doesn't matter much, even though I admire the way you toil through the many biographies leading up to experience share, 
it's my bet you've gotten very good at being empathetic. Taking hunters into the mountains, empathetic. Taking much hunters into the mountains for weeks, and have probably heard your fair share of backstories, huh? Anyway, I have some thoughts to share that might push the puzzle pieces closer together. That's the thing about a puzzle. Steve, when you dump the box onto the table, all the pieces are there. They just need to be assembled, right? And what's the quickest way to assemble? Have a bunch of people all doing it at once, just like your round table of knowledge here. It'll happen, brother. Oh, I know it will. This is the only way to do this. For sure. You recently said your interest is switching to who we are. Well, we certainly do have these skills. We've just lost the ability to access them. We've lost our ability because at some point we stopped handing them down to our children. Ever notice how men speak of their grandfathers with awe about things they handed down, the skills, the life lessons? Grandparents are more likely to leave lasting impressions on us than other people in our lives because they usually are the last pieces of knowledge we have from the generation or two before us. And grandparents are often at a point in their lives where they worry less about others than our parents do. Hence, they pass on the truest knowledge of life. But that's a story in itself. What we're interested in at this table is the how of the savvy and the why of the respective lack of knowledge, no longer, if ever, passed down, but is being downright suppressed to the point of repression, right? Bingo. The savage's existence is denied in large part because of what comes with it. And as long as those who refuse to accept this denial are kept in the footprint casting, tree knocking circle, all is well in the world of the powerful. No shit. Nailed it on the head. Because the skills they use, their knowledge, of the same world they share with us is in large part what outclasses us, aside of course, from their physical stature and respective abilities. And I believe you're right, Steve. It was and continues to be dumbed down, suppressed, etc. The tyrants that feel that that's the tyrants that feel that it's their right, their goddamned right to decide for us much of our life, we are more manageable. This way, or to be perfectly clear, We'd be unmanageable if we, as a whole, mass, realize these realms exist and can be accessed. Our being denied this, generation after generation, has in fact stifled our growth beyond our imagination, Steve. Making what we are, what we do, we live immature, to put it very plainly. We're not matured to use what we have. We are not matured to use what we have, a deeper skill we have that is buried, dare we say, forgotten. This is why the indigenous live such a different life. It isn't by way of belief or religion, but by knowledge. That which even they are losing. Knowledge by the generation. For purposes of illustration, imagine for a minute if you're able to harness the dread-throwing ability, or a mind-speaking, wouldn't your power be limitless? You mentioned the dread, absolute dread. Not common dread, yes, there's a difference. You wondered if this was a long forgotten, suppressed, or a dumbed down alert slash sixth or seventh sense we once had access to that protected us. And maybe it's re-triggered by their presences? I always tell people when trying to explain the old, if it doesn't feel right, it's probably not, as that feeling, if you may, which kept us alive when we lived in caves, is 99% accurate, yes, all that instinct is still there in our psyche. We've just lost the ability to access it. We were taught by sedentary life. Those we falsely looked to for true honest knowledge that we didn't need it. Well, they didn't and still don't want us to access it. Want us to access it. The best part is it's still there and it's still accessible. Remember the fellow who shared with us that he, that he taught others to use this? I believe this. You'd be wise to have kept that particular email, Steve. I'd keep all of them if I were you. And I've got every single one of them, and they're separate copies in a safe place, for sure. I wonder, Steve, following along your hypothesis, if the absolute dread part is something they, the Sabe, don't realize, unless we are to believe they're capable of inflicting this on upon us. 
in varying degrees of intensity? I don't know. I'm still working on this. If there's one thing I've learned, and I've had you allude to this too, that the answers to all questions are there. It just takes work. Just like all the pieces of the puzzles are on the table. Maybe one or two fell to the floor, but somebody will see it and push it next to the right place. And push it next to the right piece, and so on and so forth. Follow me? Another thought about the sudden quiet of the forest when they are sometimes around. Could it be that we, either by accident or maneuvered by them, are in, moving through, or witnessing another dimension, or entering? or in the presence of one being entered, exited, or otherwise coming from another plane. Don't smirk, brother. We can all safely agree there are portals, and they lead to where? Another dimension or another level of consciousness, for sure. Yeah, actually, I'm right there with you, too. And on that thought, too, um, I well, spoke to a couple people who you're all familiar with. And we all seem to be thinking that possibly, Possibly this the stink the stench is residue from the opening of those unexplored areas possibly We've learned that enough of, we have learned enough at the round table to know that they can come and go Maybe not all of them, but some we've heard it here at the table the text message is welcoming to different countries the footprints that just end mid stride Lost time, awakening in different locations, positions, clothing being changed, and by God, children traveling miles over rugged terrain and then found with bare, unscathed feet. Portals are real and is part of this. And I'll lay odds the quiet forest is an indication of something to do with it. Not only a sabe is near, it involves sound. Sound is vibration. And then there's the water. Portals of water. Remember, I said that, brother. This is too much to put down in one email. It needs to be a discussion, maybe another time. I will say this, the answers are out there on a public platform. One thing is true, at one point, long ago, someone in charge decided we, the masses, couldn't handle the truth. And that out of the smaller percentage that could handle it, at least one half of them would use it for no good. I'm sure they were right then. When an open mind, both literally and figuratively, were much less common, or should I say, less commonly accepted than they are today, 2021. And really, what's changed? The answers are out there and have been publicly that I can speak of since 2017. What a, ble what a better place to hide something than in plain sight. It offers deniability of malintent. We didn't really hide it, which is bullshit. That's the way it is. From the orbs to the mind speaking to the portals to the time travel, it's all out there. Right down to your original question, which I've heard you ask less and less lately, why? Why has it been kept from us? I've heard that question answered almost word for word. I've certainly read it answered word for word. I'm no longer looking for the why. People should want to learn the how. I mean, beyond how researchers keep and encourage the footprint slash tree knocking circle of idiocy, right? But to get that answer, you're going to have to open your mind even further, beyond the sad day, which I've also heard you say is probably only a small piece in the puzzle. The round table is slowly assembling. And you're right, but just as you and Dave won't outright say, you have to be careful, right? Like when you passed on the advice, I'm paraphrasing here, Steve, to turn around, quote, to turn around, eyes down, exactly, and exactly retrace your steps back the way you come, not veering right or left on your retreat, end quote. I said that. You never did say why you gave those serious, explicit instructions, right? How come? Let me stop. I'm rambling. Okay, hold on. I'll address that. I ain't scared of shit. Um, I said that because the evidence points to, and especially from people investigating people disappearing, for me, from what I am learning, and especially at that time, and especially after reading um, Edgar's story, I have learned for me that when your absolute soul-splitting dread alarm bell is going off and everything goes dead silent, there is a very, very strong chance you're entering somewhere that you're not going to be able to come back from, and you walked into it, I believe. And that's why I said, as soon as I could, look down, turn around, and go step for step exactly back the way you came from before you felt that feeling. And I'm pretty certain that's probably one thing that you can do to save your ass. 
Now to come up with the rest of the why I said that, I'm still working on it. I can't, I don't like to give a direct dictating, this is what it is. And then three million people a month start spreading that like wildfire, it all points back to me and maybe I was wrong. Maybe I didn't quite have it nailed, nailed down yet. But one thing I can say with confidence is if your soul is feeling absolutely terrified, all of a sudden can't hear a thing, buzzing in your ears, the whole nine yards, you turn around and you leave exactly the way you came. And don't go any more, more forward, don't go to the side. Turn around and go back. That's why. <laughs> all right, moving along. Mass, transdimensional consciousness. Mass being the key word here, Steve. And in large part, that is what they fear, Steve. Then and so much more now. It's been proven, it's been documented, it's been published, and yes, it's been and can be taught too, because we have the ability. And that, my brother, terrifies those in power then and now, because they wouldn't be able to control us like farm pigs in a trough. The answer is in plain sight, Steve, always the best place to hide something, right? And has been publicly available to everyone since about, since at the least 2017. That I know. But no, but known too many and by many long before, it's currently shrouded within the UFO topic. Mainly because that's where it was, excuse me, mainly because that's where it was discovered and documented by collegiate level individuals, Greer being the most well-known and of course respectively, ignore, uh, respectively ignored. Science of consciousness, sorry. Signs of conciseness. Looking forward to talk, talking sometime. Steve, stay at the course. Don't quit. Frank. Frank, thanks for those words, man. Thank you so much. And uh, you make sure you email me back, all right? I get caught up in so many emails in day-to-day -day life and all my other tasks I've got. Uh, and I try to make one of my priorities I have thrown down on top of me is I really, really, really want to make sure every single voice gets heard, even if we've heard almost the exact same story from somebody else that's relevant to another person's story, right? Every single person counts, and uh, that's why we're here. So, that being said, there's definitely a handful of people, a large handful of people out there that I want to talk to more, and uh, sometimes I just need a little bit of a kick in the butt from those same people again later on and say, hey, we're still here. Don't forget about this conversation we've got to have. So do me a favor and email me back again. Email all of us back again with more knowledge if you got it. And uh, anything you can help, everybody's wheels start spinning. We need some kicks, kicks in the lube department to get those gears spinning uh, more fluidly. That's what we need. And then. Uh, We'll keep on staying on this course, and the pieces of the puzzle are in front of our face, and I've said it for quite a while now. I believe we know the answers to everything already. We've just been so, so scrambled intentionally and manipulated. It's ridiculous. It's going to take quite a bit of frustrating moments to fight back and correct that derailment, right? And uh, if you don't quit, it will get back on the correct rails and go true and smooth again if you don't quit, right? So that's the key. You cannot quit. Nobody can quit. And then you have to pass off um, your encouragement to other people to encourage those people who are sitting on the fence, still apprehensive, kind of scared of what they saw, what they realize is true, and they, have, they are going through the troubling journey of realizing just how much uh, they don't know how much you've been lied to and how confusing it is and how scary that is too for your average person and especially to give that up in front of their friends or family or workmates, right? So, it's all, it's all a ride, it's all every single piece of this ride fits together and it's all part of the process I believe. We gotta keep listening to every single person talk. We have to give everybody their respect back, encourage them, make them safe, give them your strength, and, uh, and expose the bullshit, the lies, get the truth rolling, and become far more stronger and powerful with knowledge and use it for the good, for the better, right? There's a lot of, a lot of bad that needs to be stomped out and turned around.
But anyway, let's listen to somebody else. We make sure your email is back, all right? All right, what do we got? There's another one with puzzle in the title. A piece of the puzzle, why do they disappear? Hi Steve, we'll keep this email to the point as all of our time is valuable. I'm a big fan, enough set. My name is Ben Farmer, and you can share my name for this simple point. If anyone gets our name from this posting, it means they have an interest in Sabe. So why would we care if shared? So, we've all heard the encounters of Sabe, dogmen, and even alien encounters, where they are there one minute and then the next vanishes. And we've all heard of the Fermi paradox, which states that if the universe is so abundant with life, how come we don't see aliens everywhere? Well, I think it, has, it all has to do with consciousness and not matter itself. I believe that higher levels of consciousness means you literally vibrate at a different level than everything else. And just like the multi-universe and dimension theory, you exist in different planes of existence, depending upon the evolution and current state of your consciousness. Your spirit and body are connected, but the body keeps us grounded to a lower vibration, if you will. Conversely, when we leave the body, we lose this anchoring vibrate to a higher energy, and by default, see all that really is. So what I think is happening is Sabe, Dogman, and Aliens, multidimensionals, exist in a different vibration or state of consciousness, if you will, but sometimes can lower themselves to appear in front of our eyes. The moral of the story here is, I'm sure there are many more th beings than just these stated that exist in some space as where we are at now, that inhabit a different dimension based upon their current state of consciousness. I have no proof, of course, but this would make sense to me based upon all the stories I've listened to. It's a shame we look to scientists and the media to tell us how the world is versus just listening to each other's versions of their own reality and seeing the patterns as a collective. But the internet changed the world and has allowed us to hear from others outside of controlled mainstream interests. It's allowing us to research ourselves more both literally and figuratively. Now onto our personal experience. My wife and I did have experience recently where we were camping at Little River State Park in Vermont. It was nighttime and my wife, myself, and our two kids, kids went to sleep in the cabin tent. After the kids fell asleep, my wife and I decided to enjoy a few glasses of wine followed by some time together. And during this time, we heard what sounded like your typical barred owl fly closer and closer until right over our head, then made the loudest call followed by what sounded like a wild tropical bird followed by a monkey call. That was freaky enough, but not enough to end my wine end my wine-filled romp with my wife. <laughs> Shortly thereafter, in respite, we saw lights shine into the tent and hit the roof part and looked like lights reflected off the water being all wavy and rainbow colored. The really weird part is I just said in my head, it must be lights from the nearest camp spot's fire shining into the tent, but it obviously wasn't since the light seemed like a focused beam with a weird shimmer. My wife got too scared to look herself and I just mumbled it must be from the neighboring campsite fire and fell asleep. The next morning when I got up, I got out of the tent and saw one of the stainless steel camp mugs that we had drank the wine from was crushed to the point of the metal tearing. And it was sitting neatly on the table where we left it, just crushed. I took the other one and with all my might I could not bend it, let alone tear the metal. I then stepped on it as hard as I could and still couldn't really bend it enough to hurt it. What the F? If a bear came up and chomped on it, there would be teeth marks and it would be on the ground. Also, the fact that I heard the supposed owl call that was way too loud and turned into a tropical bird followed by a monkey, and then saw the lights and decided not to get up and see what was going on was definitely out of my character. Now granted, I had a bunch of wine. It was late at night and I just unloaded myself. I was ripe to pass out, but the things I've been looking into, Bigfoot for years now, sorry, but the thing is, I've been looking into Bigfoot for years now, out of my own interest and not encounter. And I knew this had all the classic hallmarks of an encounter, but I decided to just go to sleep. My guess is we were their entertainment for the night. Anyways, keep on with the good fight. I'm one of the good guys ready to back us all up. Best regards, Ben Farmer in Vermont. Appreciate that one, Ben. Absolutely appreciate the, that share. It sounds to me like you're picking it up. You're picking up what everybody's putting down. And uh, 
And I'd be lying if I said I didn't like the words saying you're there to back everybody up. I love that. <laughs> Note taken. Okay, Ben? And uh, please keep thinking. Please, please keep thinking and digging at that puzzle, fill it in and, and get back and share anything else you think that may help everybody. Make sure you bring it back and share it when you can, all right? And be safe out there, man. Be safe. Let's get some more out here. By the time you guys are hearing these, where am I gonna be? This is, I think there's like a week's worth of these things preloaded, so. By the time you're reading, listening to me speak right now, I am probably solo by myself in snow. Somewhere between, I might be near the halfway river, if you wanna Google that up, in North Central British Columbia. It's probably where I am at this very moment while you hear me share these emails. Now listen to this. I shot a Sasquatch in the face of the BB gun and it made me pay for it. <laughs> Hi Steve, you can use my name. I have nothing to hide, fear no one. Truth is the only way. My name is Todd Gallagher. My current age is 53 and I'm a former US Marine. My encounters that I'm about to reveal occur occurred at a young age. Normally I would skip all the details and stick to the basic facts to make it short and sweet, but you said in your video today something about trying to determine if there is a common thread between people who have had experiences. Hopefully, this extra detail might help. I feel like I know you as a good friend from the many hours of watching you spread the knowledge of the subject with all of us. If shit ever hits the fan, you are at the top of my list of names that I would stand shoulder to shoulder with to no end. Right on brother, I am right frickin' there. So here we go. The years between 1975 and 80 are when I was changed forever, knowing something going on that didn't make sense. This for me was from the fourth grade to the eighth grade in Shelby County, Tennessee. Been there. Been to Shelby County, Tennessee. I moved to a new subdivision with my mother and stepfather, which was near Shelby Forest State Park. The house we lived in was at the end of a cove and had vacant lots on both sides and nothing but trees beyond the back property lines. There weren't any street lights in the subdivision, so at night it was really dark outside. But in the daytime, it was every boy's dream. Hours upon hours of exploration awaited a curious mind with something new to discover about nature every day. I quickly picked up on and learned the native wildlife. I often would grab my bow and arrows, BB gun, pellet gun, or 410 shotgun, and head up for adventure. At this young age, I had already taken and passed a hunter safety class required to hunt in Tennessee. Before I go any further with my experiences, I'm not going to leave anything out. It might be important, or maybe not, but my mindset must be understood. I had an abusive step asshole father that despised me and I would avoid him to avoid a beating. I spent a lot of time grounded to my bedroom with no TV and cell phones weren't invented yet. It wasn't the way I thought life should be. I just wanted to love everyone and be loved back. My parents never went to church but would send me off every Sunday to my grandma's for church where I learned about the Bible. The whole Garden of Eden story where we were kicked out because the serpent lied to Eve hit a nerve with me. So I began killing every snake in the woods that I ever came across. I must have killed hundreds of copperheads and cottonmouth snakes. I often prayed to God to please come and get me because I didn't belong in this evil world. Surely I was dropped here by mistake. Okay, now maybe everyone can feel my mindset back to my experiences. As with so many others, I was stalked or followed through the woods. I could hear its footsteps but could not see it. A couple of times, it stepped on thick, dry, fallen tree limbs that made a loud snapping sound 20 feet away on the ground. I would stop and stare at the spot but visually saw nothing. Eventually, through the months of roaming the woods, my name started being called and it sounded like my mother yelling for me. After about five times of running home and finding that she wasn't calling me, I began to realize it was messing with me. Now, when I would hear my mom call clear as day, Todd, I would ignore it, thinking to myself, you're not gonna fool me with that crap anymore. Then it stopped happening because it wasn't getting a reaction out of me. All this was gradually ramping up over the years. Ugh. The next big thing that happened was on a day that I couldn't leave the yard because I was grounded again. Suddenly there was a lot of racket coming from the woods about 75 yards away. There was a lot of knocking and it was so unusual that I asked my mother what it was. She said someone was probably building a house in the woods. 
The next day I was free to roam the woods again, but couldn't wait to see the house being built. I went to where I heard the noise coming from and was shocked to find no house, but instead found a large circular impression in the tall grass that looked as if it was made by something laying down. It was bordered half round by thorny sticker bushes. I knew that this was a bed for something big. This was before I'd ever heard of tree knocking. Looking back, I know that is what we heard. Time passed and one summer night I was outside in the pitch dark watching and catching lightning bugs when I heard movement at the edge of the tree line in the empty lot next to the house. I happened to have my BB gun with me and a flashlight. I grabbed the flashlight, turned it on, and pointed it to where I heard the noise. There were two sets of eye shines staring at me from two trees. This wasn't the first time I had seen these eyes. Several times before I noticed them, but had chalked them up to small animals like raccoons or opossums. But after seeing these eyes multiple times on different nights, always at the same height, seven or eight feet off the ground, at the same group of trees, and always peeping from behind the trees. I clicked in my head that these were some sort of monsters or demons, and with God on my side, I would teach them a lesson. I grabbed my BB gun and brought it up without ever moving the flashlight off their eyes. Aiming at the closest one, I fired. It was a definite hit. I could tell by the sound of the BB hit when it hits flesh. Both sets of eyes disappeared behind the trees instantly, and I wondered, did I hit in the eye? After this event, I decided it was time to go into the house. Little did I know about the coming retribution. It was about a week later, and I'd been outside playing with my dog, very loyal dog. In fact, this dog was my best friend. Suddenly, I felt very strange. I struggled to get in the house, and once inside, I didn't make it far, collapsing on my back to the floor of the den. My sister was lying on the floor also. I asked her if she was okay, and she said she felt sick to her stomach. We were both, we were both, we were literally unable to move. I don't know where our parents were, but we were laying a couple feet apart on the floor in pain. Somehow, my dog got into the house, and he ran between us and started barking and snarling with his hackles up while staring at the ceiling in the corner of the room. I was able to look in the direction where he was staring and could see nothing but a slight darkness in the corner. I knew something was there, I was pretty sure this was payback for the shot in the face. I felt like my insides were vibrating and it made me nauseous, nauseous, and immobilized. It didn't last much longer after my dog came to our rescue. My sister and I were able to crawl to our rooms and eventually recover. This might be from the infrasound that I've heard you talk about. There are weapons for crowd control that use this technology. Days later, it wasn't over. It was only the beginning. My dog was found with a four inch wide strip of hide missing down his back, where his hackles used to be. It was horrible looking with the raw muscles showing. He was still alive, but in bad shape. When I asked what happened to him, I was told he must have gotten under a vehicle with a hot exhaust and burned his back. I wasn't buying it for one minute. I think my dog had seen the creature and was attacked for warning me of the thing's location. A couple weeks later, my dog disappeared. It was never found. Those dirty pricks, right? I missed him very much. He used to follow me everywhere and would be sitting at my school bus stop a couple blocks away from the house, waiting for me every day to get off the bus so we could go running through the woods on our next adventure. In the last few years that we lived there, these strange occurrences kept coming. I would try to make these less detailed to get through them. On my sister's birthday one year, she was pushed into a cactus plants outside with no one around her. I said something about it and was told that no, she must have tripped. On two separate occasions, two different fish tanks that I had in my room, the thermostat was turned all the way up and I came home from school to find all my tropical fish cooking in their aquariums. The aquariums were high enough that I would have to stand in a chair to reach the thermostat and was very careful about keeping the temperature set at the perfect setting. My parakeet was also found dead after school not much later. By the way, I was a, it was a latch, I was a latch key kid that would come home from school and have the key to let myself in the house and be alone until my parents got home from work. So this was troubling for my young mind, knowing what might be in my house with me. I found bare footprints in the mud following a creek during the winter after a cold rain and I come to remember thinking 
What was a grown person doing walking through the woods barefoot in the middle of the winter? It would have been cold and rough on their feet. Separately, these events might be overlooked, but together they add up to one thing. That was being tormented by more than one Sasquatch. I apologize for the length of my story, but when I started writing this, it seemed it just released all that has been bottled up inside me for many years. Since my encounters, I have searched for answers to my questions about what is really going on in this world that no one wants to talk about or is hiding from the people. It's been 40 years of holding this in. No one would believe me and simply roll their eyes if I tried talking about it. I guess that's why I'm drawn to your channel. I look forward every day to coming home and seeing what new info you are throwing out for people like me. So you thank you from the bottom of my heart for the service you're pr providing for truth seekers everywhere. In closing, I would like to share something big with you and the people that I found in my search for the truth. It validates so much of what I and others have experienced. It explains why you have trouble seeing them. They can go invisible, but it raises more questions. Can they all do this, or is it only certain ones? I don't know if you've already seen this video, I'm about to mention it, if there is only, if there is any way for you to show it to the people, it might be a game changer. It was for me. It took my breath away when I saw it. On YouTube, go to Real Bigfoot Cloaking by Alfred Martinez. Watch it and tell me what you think. Safe travels, safe travels, brother. Best wishes, Todd Gallagher. Right on, Todd. Uh, thanks for that share, man. That sure is a chain of events going down. Some of those, I guarantee you, there's going to be a lot of people screaming out demons, right? Demons, ghosts, demons. I don't have the direct, I can't give a direct confident answer what the hell that was. You know what the barefoot prints were from, that's for sure, right? But the killing of the dog, that's too common. That makes me want to frickin', it just bothers me. You don't go killing dogs. Why do you kill dogs? That, that means there's nothing good about you. If you just go out and kill a boy's dog, anybody's dog, there's nothing good about that soul as far as I'm concerned. And for that, that's where my brain says pull the trigger on your ass. But the, uh, the episode's going on inside the house, knocking you and your sister down on the ground. That's not that common. But then again, who knows? Now that you came forward with this one, how many more people are going to come forward the exact same experience? All right? And maybe possibly they even have a visual of a hairy thing standing under the window while it knocked him on the ground without touching him. Who knows, right? But the most important part is you got that out, you got it shared here today, and hopefully, obviously, that's, that's probably going to help you. And, uh, and just as importantly, it, it, hopefully, other people, it might knee jerk their memory. And uh, they, might, they might have something very, very similar that they experienced, and they're going to share it as well. And then the ball, the snowball just keeps rolling along, right? The snowball just keeps rolling. But anyway, I think that's enough for this evening. I don't think this place is going to blow into flames. And what else can I say? You know, it's funny, after I've touched on a couple other topics, Flat Earth or whatever, and, uh, and obviously the, the emotionally challenged will be triggered no matter what it is you say, or how you say it, <laughs> right? And uh, it's funny, the amount of emails I have received in the past few weeks of people threatening me is a little ridiculous, to be honest. Like, there's a whole lot that you guys don't understand that gets sifted through received on my end. It's, it's non-stop, substantial, not substantial, I shouldn't say substantial, because there's nothing, there isn't one person out there that can intimidate me and stop what I'm doing. And, um, but just as, as I'll, I will give this friendly, kind message to some of the emotionally challenged people out there who think, think that they, that they, uh, they think that there may be a possibility of them visiting somebody on the rural property they've never met, don't even know, and threatening them with violence. You might want to think about this one. Think hard. Think hard before you react on your emotions. Because not only me, but many, many other people that live rurally or live anywhere else. If you go and threaten a man where he lives, in his home, there's a very, very high chance that you're not going to leave there. You're probably going to end up in a hole. Right? So, 
pull it in. Quit being so stupid. And think about what you're, think about how your brain is firing, all right? Some crazy people out there, you guys. I'll tell you what. Some crazy people out there. But I bite my lip 99.999% of the time and I'm receiving the most ridiculous emails. And, but I've, I've, I've never really had it in me to, I've never had it in me to run or back down, which is obviously a fault. It's just got me in some trouble a few times where, you know, even my grandfather said to me one time, why didn't you just run away from him? I'm like, because I could, you know, and then I've, I'll never forget him saying that to me. And sometimes that is probably the better thing to do, but I, I, I'll admit it, I got a real tough time with that. But anyway, I'm babbling, I'm rambling, it's tired, it's been a long day. But for all you wackos out there who aren't thinking rationally, you think you want to threaten a stranger, you might want to think twice about that, okay? This is probably, this is probably not going to end well for you, right? But anyway, on that note, everybody, uh, everybody keeps sending in that information, all right? Get those puzzles filled in and never quit. You do not quit. And don't be scared of anybody or anything ever. All right? Talk to you shortly.